Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. Yes, and tonight's going to be special because we got my guy, Jamal Robinson. That's right, Mount C. McClancy, you know, Virginia University, you know, Miami Heat, you know, let's get. Oh, yeah, and my guy's back. My guy, Jamal Paul, the artist, he's definitely back in the building. And this is sponsored by Styles by Nita and Unique Creations. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you just have stepped into, into, the into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets because the game about to start. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Slow motion is ugly down here. What's happening? What's happening? What's going on, my brother? You good? Yeah, man. Life. I woke up this morning. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You sound a little fuzzy. You sound a little fuzzy. Oh, um, I don't know if it's the earpiece. Oh, there you go. Okay, you sound better. better now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, good to have you, man. I appreciate you, you know, taking out some of your time to uh, come on Basketball Heads and tell your story, man. No, nah, so this is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? You, you didn't have to do this. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my guy Chuck, man, who I went to high school with, you know, he referred you to me. He was like, yo, G, you definitely need to get my man on. He got a story, and he's doing his thing. So salute yeah. to my guy Chuck. Shout out, big, big, big time shout out to Chuck. Like, he held me down when I came down here, man. Um, I can't thank him enough. Okay. That's good. That's good. So, let's get this thing on the road, man. Uh, what I like to ask all my guests when they first come on the show is, who introduced you to the game? I mean, my father. It's actually a family thing. Everybody, everybody pretty much has played. We're all big guys. And, uh, you know, I was there. With my father in the college dorm when he played chasing basketball. You know, my mother has pictures of me chasing the basketball during games. But my dad, 100% my father. Uh, did your father play? Yeah, he did. He, um, you know, he's from from Brooklyn and uh, went to Grady. Played okay, Grady. okay. But he, um, you know, he did the military thing. And then he ended up at Denison University and he played there. Right. That's as far as he took it. But his brother, you know, my uncle, it's like I said, it's a family thing. Brooklyn, um, he actually got drafted by the Trailblazers. He's he played at Appalachian State. He's in their little Hall of Fame, and uh, okay, he, he took it to another level. Yeah, so that's good, man. I, I think uh, it's important for guys to have those role models early on. You know, it actually gives you a incentive to push that. You know, push a little bit harder. No, one hundred. I mean, I mean, we hear it all the time, but. Uh, it was, trouble was never, I mean, of course that was there, but my love of basketball, which was instilled by them, it kept yeah. me that. The love for basketball kind of superseded everything in our lives, yeah. you know? And it, I mean, I, I don't know if you, I'm sure you want to get into the past and all that stuff, but again, that kept me away from it. Those those cats that, uh, you know, that kind of ran our hood made right. sure that, you know, we, we didn't have to see that. They took care of, you know. Even you know my father and I happened to duck and explain why I got some shoes and but um you know they 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 kept us away from from any of that and uh even when I went off to college with my brother my younger brother they treated him with love the same type of thing as well so it was good. That's dope. That's dope. Ask him who's the best point guard he ever played with. They look look you're on point look look already already. <laughs> Salute to my guy, Ross. He's always on. You know what I'm saying? Checking us out. 100. 100. Big time basketball head. 100. 
Bro. You want you want to answer that question? I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave the flow open, man. No, I mean I, I I like my audience to ask questions. So I was fortunate to play with with many. Like the first the first kid I ever played with, shout out to Clarence, was Skip. Like we were nine, eight, nine. Like then I had Shandu McNeil. Noodles wasn't bad in high school. You know we got the city championship. College, right. uh, Corey Alexander, you know, he's big time commentator now. Um, pros, you know, Tim Hardaway, like, you know, the, the, the little time that I had, I, I've had some, you know, I had some major overseas. I had, you know, my man Lupo. I had some good ones. The greatest, I got to I gotta give it to, you know, the hopefully, you know, I got to give it to Tim Hardaway. I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go ahead and use him. Okay, all right, all right. And look, no, I don't think nobody going to argue with that, man. Yeah, nah, nah, that's cool. Oh, uh, man, I don't know if you know me here on Basketball Heads. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. For, hold, on hold, hold, hold on, G. Go ahead, go ahead. Because you see what your man just put on it. Yo, I wore a Band-Aid everywhere, Ross. I had a Band-Aid everywhere, under the eye, the shorts, the back of the sneaker, on my bag. Love him. Love him, my fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yo, and I and I love him even more because he was my roommate in the Empire State Games. Word. Oh man. Yes. Yo, yes. Man. Uh, Definitely a dog. Uh, who it was? It was uh, Eric Johnson, Vinnie Johnson, brother. Mm -hmm. Dwayne Martin, Boo Harvey, Ross yes. Strickland. Yes. Eric Brown. Um, Pete Nice from third base was actually on that team. Yo, wow. Yo, nah. The crazy. rapper. Yeah. Cause he played for Columbia. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yo, let me tell you. D came to to the room with a bag, two bags packed by Missouri. He had no idea what was in the bags. <laughs> what? He said, yo, yo, G, because I just met him that, that time. He said, go in there and that bag, whatever you like, girl, you can keep it. Son, they got down. That was one of my home visits. And they pulled me and my dad in quick, and they waited. They waited right. for my mom to come up out the room, and they put us in quick, like up, up close. I mean, and was like, "Yeah, they got down." Norm Stewart got down, and uh, all he kept, okay, kept, all, right. all, all he kept talking about was D. Cheevers, D. Cheevers, Queens Finals. No question, definitely South South Finals. Yes, for yeah. sure. No doubt. So, who was your first coach? Um. Shit, it might have been, I might want to say Clarence. Ever? Or oh, you talking about real life? Yes, yeah, your first coach, yes, I that you ever had. I, I want to say Clarence. Remember. Probably Clarence, 305 Park, Brooklyn. Okay. Um, I met him in the, uh, I think it was the Navy, the, the Navy Yard or whatever that is. And, right. You know, my, my father brought him, you know, me to him. And I guess my dad was like, all right, I'm going to, you know, fall back. Okay. What was, what was his Somebody, uh, all, uh, well, who's that? All Hassan's gem oh, said, man. if you have one more year to brother. play, and, uh, that's my brother, man. That's, that's, that's your God? Okay, okay. Oh, and then if you play one more year in Lebanon, would you play? No, no, no real talk. Like, I left my stuff over there knowing I was going back. Like, by far, that was the great, that was the most, they treated me like family. Like, his family, they're my family. I love them. They took me in. You know, all the bull... We cursing on here, G? Yeah, 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 man. Go ahead. Be yourself. All, That's all, right. All that bullshit with the media. And, you know, I went over there and scared and nervous. And they took me in and made me feel... I went over there, even after 9-11 and all that bullshit, I went over there two more times on vacation. Like, I love it over there. And so I had left my clothes there thinking I was going back. And things worked out wow. where I got on with the heat. That was the only reason I didn't go back. I wanted, like, I love Lebanon. And I love them. Wow. I love them. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. So coming up, who are the best player in your neighborhood? Two brothers, Tyrone Latimer, Jerome Latimer. Ty Latimer was the one, though. He's the one, you know, when it, when it came to all the parks and everybody around the city knew him. He's just a straight bucket. And uh, mm. they, actually, they actually helped me. So, you know, they were the two that would come grab me from, from my apartment, like, let's go. Kings Park is the park that I grew up primarily in. Played, you know, we played all over. 
but Kings Park was my park. Like that's right across from my building. And uh, okay, okay. And it'd be situations when I hear that ball bouncing late at night, and I knew my parents were asleep, and I would just, <laughs> I'm out there like we in the park three in the morning, and uh, you know, right. the time my father came and snatched me up, but um, it was worth it. But now nah, that uh, Tyrone Jerome Latimer, and that was the time like you know, Boo Hog, um, of course, uh, Dave, Dave was Dave was the god, like, but as far as up close with Tyrone Jerome Latimer. Got you, got you. Okay, all right. So you played junior high school ball. You went through that whole process. No question. I was at PS eighty six, then I went to two seventeen, and um. It, that, is that by uh, LG? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's no. Two seventeen is like near Malloy. So. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Oh, Queens. This is Queens. Okay. Got oh, you. Yeah, got you. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. My fault. Two seventeen is like maybe a fifteen minute walk to Malloy, Archbishop Malloy. Okay. 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 Right. We go. We definitely gonna get to that. Uh, <laughs> right. That that was definitely one of my questions. Uh, yeah, why why Malloy and not the PSAL? Nah, I mean, why McClancy? Excuse me, McClancy. Nah, so again, I, I, I mentioned my uncle playing at Appalachian State. His coach was Bobby Crane. Right. So now Bobby Crane okay, right. is cooking at Georgia Tech. So from my ninth, I'd say my, from 9 to 14, something like that, we would go to basketball camp down in Georgia Tech. So when it got around that time, I was supposed to go to Edison. I thought Hillcrest, because I lived down the street from Hillcrest, 89-15 right. Boston Boulevard. And um, um, Coach Crimmins brought up uh, Jack Curran. So his thing was he was going to place me at Malloy. And I was, supposed mm. to, I was supposed to end up – what's good, Ed? I was supposed to end up at G Tech. So – I went up there, like, again, me and my father and my mom, we went and sat with them and all this stuff, and they were talking about all this academic. <laughs> I shouldn't say it that way. But they were talking about hours and hours, like four hours a night of homework, and I kept it clean. Like, once we left there, like, yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't want to do. And then I heard how, you know, the academic pressure, but I love Coach Cullen, so I'd go up there, and, you know, Shandu was there. That's my man, Shandu McNeil. Shout out Lightning, the Lightning. But, um... It just it just didn't work out. So the assistant coach Kevin Cantwell, Coach Kremen's assistant coach at Georgia Tech, brought up McClancy. Uh huh. And that's you know all everything lined up. It wasn't quite as strenuous as far as the home. Yeah, are you breaking up? Are uh, you breaking up? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on, Jay. You breaking up a little bit. Good. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, Kevin Cantwell, who was at that time uh, coaching with Coach Crimmins at Georgia Tech, pointed McClancy out to me. That was the school he went to. And it was a little less strenuous in, re in regards to homework. And, and I, I just saw an opportunity, and that's where I ended up. And uh, everything lined up. Coach Kent was amazing. Like, um, it, you know, I had, I had fun in high school. It was good. That was a school for me. So that's how I ended up at McClancy. Yeah, I – Oh, Chris. I play. I play with some of Clancy greats, uh, Marla, uh, Russell Williams and Marlon Miller. Say that one more time. Somebody had just called me. Say it one more time. Okay, I play with some uh, McClancy greats, Russell Williams and Marlon yeah. Miller. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I play. I play with them in, in some summer leagues. And Rebel told me to tell you what's up. That's my. That's my man, yo. Like, I can't. I can't speak enough on Rev. Rev's my man for life. He was there for us when we were younger, man. Like, yeah, Rev he's, he's done. He's done a lot for a lot of people in uh, throughout New York City, man. So definitely salute Rebel. You see, he a lot of people don't rock with him. It's because he's always kept it real. Like, he he don't play them games. You know, I can't hear you. What you said again? What you said again? In, in regards to Rev, you see, like a lot of people you, don't rock. You going? You going in and out? I can't really hear you. Uh, you got. Yeah, you still static. Now, G. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear now. What about now? No, I was yeah, saying I hear you. in regards to Rev, a lot of people don't rock with Rev 
And that's because he keeps it real. And he always has. Like, he's always been there. When you had, you know, you had a lot of dudes taking advantage of kids and stuff like that. And he's always stood, you know, he's always stood up for them. And, and, and it's yes. rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Rubbed good people. Always, always. And he's going to keep it 100 from beginning to end. Gee, I got to shout out somebody real quick. We got we got the, the, the one and only Nakia Hill on here. I don't know if you remember Kia Hill, but she was on. Yo, let's let, let's do this. Yo, Jamal, let's do this. Let's. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna cut you back out, and you come back on real quick. Okay. All right. See if yeah. that works. All right. Everybody, stay in the building. We coming back. We just gonna reload so we can hear uh, these classic stories, man. I, I want to get every word and make sure you guys hear it too. So. As soon as he come back on, we're gonna uh definitely begin. Here you go. One more again. We good now? We good, we good, we good. Okay. All right, I, so I, who are some I, of the I, top I, players in New York? You was continue, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. No, no, I just want to shout out again. We got one of the one of the, the, the legends in regards to women's basketball, Christ the King Great, Nakia Hill on here. I don't know if you remember Kia Hill, but she was all everything. I just want to say hello. Yes, listen, please DM me. I need you to be the first woman on basketball heads. <laughs> she should be. Kia, stop playing. You heard what Definitely. he said. Definitely. Okay, Jim. Definitely. Let's roll. Let's roll. I, I was trying to get Shamika uh, Holslaw, you know, yeah. definitely, and, and Epiphany Prince, all those uh, steady uh, women basketball players, and I'd love to have you as well. We can make that happen. Please DM me, because I, I definitely want to make that happen, and we can follow each other, and we can, you know, appreciate that, Jamal. No, nah, no. Nah. She needs to be recognized. So who are some of the top players you played against, you know, coming up in McClancy? Like, who are some of your uh, competition? Yeah. I mean, again, we're we talking like, you know, like Charles Jones, Shandu McNeil, Eddie Alisma, Rice, Felipe Lopez, Rice, uh, Reggie Freeman, um, Charlton Clark, he's a little younger. Uh, Tyler Brown, Hassan Thompson. Like, we lost to St. Ray's in the chip. And them motherfuckers still to this day don't let me live that down. Like, Pooh, Pooh, uh, Pooh, uh, I mean, God. Damn where, you, where you at is having bad reception, my G, because you, you sound like Teddy Rowley. So, <laughs> I was sitting in the office. It's usually clean. Word. So is it still bad now? Huh? Is it still bad now? Are you hearing yourself clear? Yeah. Hello? Kareem Reed, he's another one. Can you... What about now? Yeah, he's still... Huh? Still fuzzy? Yeah. Like even your voice, your voice. I can see you, but your voice is coming through. Let me take this here. Like you got a synthesizer. <laughs> what about now? What about now? Now you fuzzy. Video is fuzzy. What the fuck? <laughs> um. Yo, give me a thumb. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear them. People are on, on that's checking in because I know you fuzzy on my side. Maybe you need to go to a different part of the crib. You know, I'm right in the main hub. The shit, I'm in the office. We right here. It's right here. Oh, okay, all right. But so you usually, you usually good right there. I know you, you went on live there before. <laughs> Yo, Kibu, knock it off, man. It's um, it is thunder and lightning and all that out here, though. <laughs> never what up? What up, Kenny Anderson on the check in? Tim, oh, love him. That's my brother. Um, <laughs> so so is it better now? She said Kia said she can hear. So, yeah, it's still coming through a little little funny, man. I don't know if it's just thunderstorm shit that's going on down here or not. 
Hey, stay patient, stay patient with us, people. We just, we just getting cooking. Um. All right, let me move. Let me move. Let me move. Let's see. Let me see. Yeah, I, I think I think it's, it's about time that Eli you get a a, a black head coach down there. You know, something somebody just to shake things up a little bit and bring the community back and and to give us the support. I know they've been doing well. In the past couple of years, but definitely need to bring the community back to LIU. Let me see. For sure, that's Gee, definitely that a good question. Am I still ugly? I'm definitely going Am I better or am I still huh? ugly? All right, get, get it straight. Hello? Yeah, I can't even hear him. Damn. Can you hear me at all? Don't worry about it. I'm here, brother. I got patience, bro. We're here. <laughs> yo, yo. Hold on. Let me move one more time. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. For some reason, after Teddy Riley done did that, it seemed like <laughs> everybody been having those glitch problems. Yo. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Teddy was playing it off. He had nice people in the background. Long with his back there with tambourine. <laughs> Just to distract the people who let them know, listen, ain't nothing really going on, but something going on. Tomorrow, we got Dwayne Coswell, oh, Cardoza, oh. Temple. Yes. 40? And Miami Heat. We got him tomorrow. I read, oh. And I ran into Todd Gibson today. Todd, Todd Gibson was doing a beautiful thing in my neighborhood today. He was feeding some workers uh, through his uh, Todd Gibson Foundation. And I, you know, saw him, said what's up, introduced myself, let him know about the platform, and he's going to be here soon as well. So it's always good to see how guys come back to the neighborhood and give back. You know, and show their appreciation for the people out here working. You there, Jay? I'm right here. You, it's the same. Hello? Shit. Gee. Yeah, yeah, you still. I feel you, but I can't really hear you. This is, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know, fam. You got some. You got 2G Yo. down there? <laughs> Yo. I don't. We spent a lot of motherfucking money. Each month. I don't fuck with. I'm, I'm just. I'm just having fun, man. That's it, man. Hold on. Hold on for one second. Oh, I hear you clear now. Word. You can hear me now. Yeah. All right. Let's. I'm not moving. I'm gonna stay right, motherfucking here. All right. Cool. <laughs> so good. Let's get back to it. But yeah, now, nah, like, you know, my time was. You know, I named some of the names, Selden Jefferson. Uh, I mean, it, it's so many dudes, man. Like, it was it, it was tough. The city was tough. It was right before that that the little decline or whatever. So, oh, we definitely going to get into that, and that's one of the reasons why uh, I started Basketball Heads, man, and and definitely uh, try to real be rebuild the city in some kind of way. At least give my input. So we can at least start the dialogue to get some action going on. Let's do it. Yeah. So, okay. We're still on you now, right? Mm -hmm. How did you guys do with McClancy while you was there? No, I mean, we did pretty well. You know, we got to the chip my senior year, and we, I'm going to keep it 100. Kareem Reed killed us. And. Mm. And it was one of those things where I told my point guard, look, you can't reach on this dude. If anything, give him space, let him shoot the rock, because he wasn't really known for that. He was a scorer. The motherfucker could just play. Right. And he ate our asses up. And everybody else is fell in suit. But he he was the reason, man. And, uh, you know, again, I love him to death. But Ring Reed was the reason we lost the goddamn city championship. That's, that's, that's real. That's real. So what A2 team did you play for? Which AU? Yes. Riverside Church, baby. Hawks fly high. Yeah, I, I previewed them as well. We had a lot of River guys uh, 
his a lot of uh, Riverside heads that I uh, interview, a lot of them. Uh, yeah. You, Pat Alphonse, uh Mike Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, just talk about Phil Smith, right? All these guys, you know, can't even play, right? Mm -hmm. Play both, but mm -hmm. a lot of Riverside guys. So, how was your time? Like, you know, who were some of the guys that was on that team? With we had, you? Um, Shandon McNeil at the one. And, and, and Shandon McNeil at the one. Charles Jones at the two. Selden Jefferson and Shan pretty much did that one two combo. Then you had Sunshine uh, Smith. Kibu Stewart, who's on here right now, who was a monster. Nice, Kevin, nice. Kevin Simmons, uh, Eddie Elizma. Um, I mean, I, I could keep going. We we were pretty tough. It was either us or the shows. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So there's a rumor going around that you was kicking some ass in five star. Nah, I mean, once I started to get a little, you know, confident, whatever, I did pretty well, and uh, I, that that was that was that was crazy. That was my real first time seeing like. The first time we went up there was like the first time I really saw the the top the shit was crazy. Um, for example, you know, we had a young Steph Marbury with us and then uh mm. we leaving we leaving little lads to head to Honesdale and this boy from Jersey gets on, on the van and we all like, Who the fuck is this? Whatever, you know. And that turned out to be Tim Thomas. He's getting ready to be a ninth grader. Like wow, the the level of talent up at Five Star was crazy, and that's also where I came in. You know, I I met that I value and I love to death. Like it's my man Rasheed Wallace. I had never seen nothing like that before, and you know this this dude. It, it was nothing flashy. This motherfucker was picking up trays off tables. Like then you know you had to work if you stayed in the cabin, and uh, you know she was just. Humble, he still is. Like he's still one of the realists. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Five Star was amazing, and yeah, I was able. I was able to do do pretty well. So that's when you start really get uh, a lot of attention from the colleges. Uh, uh, well, I. Or when I you get some attention school. before that? Well, no. Nah, once I went to Nike, once I went to ABC, that that's when it, the shit went crazy. You know, me and Sal Jeff was there again. Steph was there. Um. And we just, we just, we play well. It's just having fun. That's that's my thing. I ain't never been one to hunt buckets and all that shit. I just, I love playing the game. I love the, you know, I love assists. I love handling the basketball. Again, our our, our man is on here, Chibs, who I can't think enough because I was trying to handle the ball just like him, like mm -hmm. just, standing, just standing in front of the building, like or just being in the park, you know, because the old heads wouldn't let young niggas, you know, get on right away. Just. Just dribbling and envisioning him getting like it was just I wanted that, and I just that's how I worked on that. You know, mom, dad, you, we need some milk or something from Deli Mo's. You know, of course, I'm 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 going. You know, I need to work on my left hand a little bit. I'm pounding that rock. I grab that bag. I hold it. And I, I switch it over to the right, and I'm handling the ball at the left. Like there wasn't. We didn't have all the stuff that they have today. Those reps came from, you know, just every day. I, I handled the ball every day, and I tried to be just like him. I wanted to handle the ball like Chibs. And, uh, yeah. Salute to my guy, Kenny, man, for sure. A lot of a lot of guys uh, grew up idolizing and wanted to do the things he did while he was uh, looking at Pearl and idolizing what Pearl did. So, you know, that's, that's exactly. the benefits of coming from New York. No doubt. All right, so... We want to get let it calm down a little bit. Um, I ask everybody this, right? Don't be shy. <laughs> Who asked did you bust to let you know you was ready? The cat that I told you about, Tyrone Latimer. When okay, so let me let me explain. So Jerry Stackhouse played AAU with us, and we were getting ready to go. We we're getting ready to start our LA trip, LA, and, and you know the Slam and Jam. Then we go to the BCI in Phoenix. And then we do uh, uh, Golden Hoops and all that shit. And um, matter of fact, I think he was up for Golden Hoops. We, we were around the trip off. You break it up again. Trip. You break it up again. I can't really hear you. Hold up. You break it up again. I want to hear it. I got to hear the story. 
Can you hear me now? What about now? Hello? Can you hear me? What about now? Nah. Damn it, son. But, um, give me a thumbs up if you can hear him. Give me a thumbs up if you can see Jamal. Give me a thumbs up. So maybe it's just on my end. I don't know. If he's fuzzy, let me know. Am I fuzzy now? He sound like the Tully Valley, the, the synthesizer <laughs> voice. Don't worry about it, because we, we, by the time you come back on, you know, because we definitely got to do a part two we talked about earlier. Of course, there's a lot, there's a lot, man. It's going to be a lot clearer than this once I get back in the studio. So how about now? Can you Hello? Me? You there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see you. What about now? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear him. Tom Wayne, give me a thumbs up. This is crazy. G, you got me? Hello? Can you hear me? I can see you fine, but your voice coming. All right, Tom Wayne, all right, let's go. Let's go. Everybody see you. Okay. So who else did you bust? To let you know you was ready. Ty, La uh, Ty, um, Ty Latimer. He was the one that I told you about in regards to my neighborhood who ran everything. Like, uh, he was he was the best in our neighborhood. And so, like I said, Stack Stackhouse played AAU with us, and he was staying with me. But one night, it's about 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. And it was just one of those things where they, I heard the ball bouncing, so we went out there. I think it was talking cash shit. So I was like, let's play the me, me and Stack versus him and his brother. But it didn't work out that way. So it ended up being. Tell her to, tell her to get off that shit. That's what the fuck, that probably the problem is. Anyhow, pardon me. So uh, it ended up being me and Ty. And for some some reason, I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but the park was actually, it ended up full. And once I beat him, that's when I knew I had arrived. That's when I knew I, I was the best on it. That's that was nice. the important nice. part in regards to my confidence and my level in terms of me believing in myself. Once I beat him, I was good. You hear me, G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Okay. You you yeah, fine yeah. right where you was at. I think every time you move. <laughs> That's crazy. Hello? I spent too much money. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> what you say? We spent too much money on this shit for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for this shit to be going crazy. All right, so <laughs> now you know you're ready, right? Uh-huh. And you move, you got, you going to your senior year, you decided what schools you're going to go to. What schools were recruiting you besides Virginia? It's crazy, man. Like, again, because that time, our time, college basketball was everything. So, for example, you know what the home visit, you know what the home visits are and all that shit, right? I had, yeah. eight, I had 18 home visits. The lowest school was UC. Damn. Uh, no question. The lowest school was UC Irvine, and that was because of Rod Baker, who was church. He coached me, and he, uh, you know, he got that head coaching job. Other than that, you know, I had everybody from Lute Olson, Denny Crum, Norm Stewart, Long Kruger. Like, anyhow, it got to be crazy. But what, what was nice was because the hood loved college basketball, Everybody was in front of the building. They knew the schedule, who was coming, whatever. So they would cheer some and they would boo some. It, it was it was amazing. So, but when it came down for me with my my six, when you posted that five, I really had six. Was Arizona, Louisville, Florida State, 
Virginia, Villanova, and then the Qs. I had already taken it, and, um, you know, I was flirting with you know, taking, take, going back up there to check it out. But I only took two visits, which was crazy, because I was going to commit to everybody. I, was, I ain't going front. But, I, you know, I took Villanova, and a, lot, a big part of that was because of Rasheed Wallace. And, uh, and I took right. NBA. And the next one was Arizona, and I didn't, I didn't go. So, my again, my my five or my six was Arizona, Villanova, Virginia, Louisville, Florida State, and the Cuse. And why you chose Virginia? <laughs> uh, when I got down there, it was Death Comedy Jam weekend. They had the Tribe Called Quest coming through. And the Keep It 100. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? This shit's crazy. Yeah, he's coming through a little slow on my side. Fuck. What about now? Yeah, perfect. So, they, it was Def Comedy Jam weekend, my trip down to VA. They came, you know, it flew me. It, it was an, an amazing, just the whole, that little bit of an experience, just the way I was treated. And then, you know, it, it was a perfect storm. Like, they had Def Comedy Jam, a uh, tribe called mm. um, at the concert. Um, it might have been The Roots, too. Um I think, yeah, I think it was the Roots just before they really got kicking. But it was just one of those things. It was just perfect. They knew I loved them. And then I saw so many, so many beautiful things. <laughs> I saw, oh, it was, it was unreal. It, it was unreal. Like, and then I saw, you know, wow. the, the way the guys were being treated highly, you know, academics was crazy. Straight up 29 to 95, straight home shot. And, uh, I saw some of the things that the guys was whipping. You know, I saw an opportunity to uh, get some nice things. And uh, it pretty much sealed the deal, man. Like, I committed immediately, of course, which was a mistake because I should have took my visit to Arizona. There's no fucking way. Mm. Yeah. So. That's, that's crazy you say that, man. That's crazy because uh, – when I took my, my visit to Fela Dickinson, a lot was going on as well, right? They always get you when, you know, the parade is happening, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everything is happening on campus, and you think it's like that all the time. Um, but one of the things that I remember that Jerry Ice Reynolds said to me was when he went down to LSU and he saw all the women that was down there, <laughs> he was sold. <laughs> it's hard not to be. I mean, you know, I, my father didn't play that shit. Like, my girl, you know, I, I may have had a girlfriend. I didn't really. My girlfriend was the basketball. So I'm like, that's all I, the basketball was was my girlfriend. And uh, right, right. I got, I got, it, it got crazy. Like, I had that freedom. It got crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. I said, yo, G. It was so many light skinned women down there. You know, I love light skinned women. They were just everywhere. <laughs> and I, I, I never left. <laughs> no, real talk. Until I turned pro. Real talk. Right. You know, we'll keep going. I'm sure you're going to come back to what happened in college, stuff like that. And then I'll explain how some of that shit hindered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I wanted to ask you uh, who was the coach at that time? Jeff Jones. He's now uh, at ODU. He's down here, at ODU. Oh, yeah. So, what what are some obstacles that you went through while you was at Virginia? Oh, it's crazy. Um, so I had a I had a a decent freshman year where you could see a lot of potential, and uh, towards the end of it, I had a, a nice run, which actually helped me in regards to any of the professional stuff I ended up doing because people paid attention to that. But um, you know, I I just I crashed like I just. It was a downhill descent from my sophomore year on. And I was never me again. It, one thing I didn't understand was the selfish side of basketball. And I sh it's crazy to say that because I played with some guys who all they gave a fuck about was their numbers. Right. I was about everybody having fun. I, would, all I, I didn't really care about numbers. Like, everybody talks about numbers. I just cared about playing the game, man, and having fun with it. Like, you know, boogieing and 
you know, dunking, catching lobs, shit like that. That's I didn't give a fuck about having 30 and stuff like that. If the numbers came with it, so be it. And that was where I had to learn quickly, like, you know, everybody ain't in it like you. Everybody doesn't feel the same fucking way you do. Yeah. So, you know, I had the good run my freshman year. The chatter, you know, the talk is crazy. I, I drew a lot of attention to myself. And then, you know, we had guys come back, and then shit just, just, went, it just went wrong. The first game, and I'm not blaming them because they're my brothers, and I, I love them to this day. I talk to them to this day. Actually, I, I lean on one of them, and I ain't going to go killing names, dropping names and stuff, but. Right, right. It's all good, yeah. One of them took 26 or 28 shots, and the other one took 24 shots. The first fucking, it, it went from the very jump, our first game, and this is in the preseason NIT. It was just, it was a foreshadowing what was to come. Like, the field was different. And, you know, I had I had games, you know, I had my good games, just wasn't any consistency. And it got to the point where basketball was going wrong. I had to start seeing the psychiatrist. And people, mm. it got that serious because that's what I love. That was my life. So I went into a dark place, man. Like, I didn't want to fuck with nobody. I had the big ass uh, letter comfort over my window, straight black in the room. Yeah, I went, cra it, it was fucked. Like, I, I, I slammed. I, I hit rock bottom. And, you know, I have people, wow. ask, a lot of people ask me, what happened and why didn't you? Or it had nothing to do with the level. I was clearly good enough, way better than a lot of guys. I just, I just couldn't figure it out and get out that cloud, man. And it's just one of the things I had to go through. And uh, it, it, it was just, Something I had to go through. And another thing, I was still living that life. Like, I was receiving things a little too early. And I stopped coming home. And I tell guys to this day, never stop going home. You have to get that real, that feel. Like, you know, you have a lot of people blowing smoke up your ass and shit like that at these schools. And people who love you, but at the same time, aren't always in it for your best interest. And I could have, the, you know, that that's home. And I stopped going home. A lot of time I spent, you know, I spent time with, with different people, receiving things, didn't work on my game. The focus wasn't there. So I can't just blame my coach for the, some of the shit that I went through. It's on me too because there was distractions. But um, I knew in my heart that I would make I would make it. That was something that I never, that never, you know, even with me not having a bunch of points, I knew I was more than talented. And I got my opportunities, you know, as some people say, I got the job that I wanted. But um, I went through a lot of UVA, man. Like, it honestly wasn't, it wasn't the school. It wasn't my fit. Of course, they made it seem like we play a certain style and we didn't play that style. I knew shit about half-court offense, coming off screens and stuff like that. It was get it, boogie, pass, let them throw it up, catch it, lob, whatever, or bring it up, dish, you know, distribute, move. It wasn't, again, that, that half-court shit wasn't, I, that wasn't something that I, I didn't pay attention to Reggie Miller when he was coming up. I, I, I just, the jump shooting game wasn't my shit. I just didn't, but I learned that I needed that. And we'll, I guess we'll get to that later, but I struggled there. I should have went to Arizona. And another thing, and I tell these kids, you know, as a coach now, we not only should be recruiting you, we definitely should be recruiting your parents. So, in doing so, if your mother has a feel, pay attention. I didn't. My mom, yeah. my mom said she had a bad feel about Virginia and that I shouldn't go there. Mm. And I didn't listen. And she was absolutely right. Absolutely right. We sped through that whole recruiting shit. I got some wild stories on recruiting shit, though. Yeah, yeah. We got, well, I'm definitely, we'll definitely touch on that when we get into the, uh, you know, your culture part. But it's, it's, it's funny that you say that, uh, how you went through depression, you got to go see a psychiatrist. Oh, no. I think there are a lot more basketball players that go through that than people realize. So I, had one, um, I had one this past year. Like It's not even just this past year. I, when I first took the job, there was one young man, he never looked me in my eyes, like, and he was always frowning or upset. I'm talking about the whole fucking year. I was just like, how is that possible? This is supposed to be one of the joyous times of your life. And this shit had nothing to do with basketball. I still feel like I love this kid. Like, I really believe something's going on with him. And when I got there, 
they didn't really, they just kind of chalked it off the immaturity and shit like that. No, nah, that shit's real, man. Yeah. That shit's yeah. real. Like, you know, I'm not going to mention his name, but I love him and I'm worried to death about him. Luckily, he's headed the right direction. You know, he's getting ready to start his pro journey. But he was one I, I didn't feel I really got to. And I, I, I try, you know, my best because I, you know, I want him to win. I want him to succeed. I want all these motherfuckers to succeed and win. It's rough out here. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I interviewed Ephraim Whitehead and, you know, uh, knowing Ephraim since he was 14, 15 years old, uh, to seeing him blossom and the man he's become today and helping a lot of kids in our community and teaching and giving them himself. He said when he was finished playing ball, when the game was over, he was feeling depressed. He had contemplations of taking his life. And, and it's not some business I'm putting out there because he, he put that in the interview. I just use and tell people to watch FM's interview. Like, I'm going to tell them to watch yours because it's the other side of basketball. No question. Right? And and that's a big thing right now with mental health and that people don't want to address, especially as black men. We don't want to address that. We don't want to address going to a psychiatrist. We don't want to have that label. And sometimes we need the help that's going to propel us in the right direction you and help who, us be our self again. You know who came down? Like, again, this is a no-brainer. It was wild, though, because it was the weather was crazy. It was snowing, storming. My father and my brother came down, six-hour drive from the city, just asked me if I was good. They both hugged me, and they got back in that motherfucking car, and they drove six hours, man. Like, there's no greater man, and there's no great like, family is everything, man. Like, yeah, man. But no, yeah. it's definitely one of those things where it's overlooked, and that's where you got to have that staff, that coach who really gives a fuck about you, man. Like, these, guys, these kids are getting caught up in all the lights and all the bullshit. But, again, they need to go ahead and look into whom they'll be, you know, possibly spending the next four years of life with. Like, that shit ain't no joke, man. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Straight Grimo said that being in uh, VA helped you land the coaching gig there uh, in VA? Nah, nah, son, nah. Hell no. The whole – again, I, di I didn't want to coach. And um, it came to me, it was like – it was just the right time, the next part of my journey. Um, but no, nah, that, that shit ain't have nothing to do with that. I guess maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, no, because the head coach, you know, of, of my uh, at, at HU, he he's not from there, and he he wasn't really aware. He knew of me from playing, but no, nah, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like you know they were like, oh, he's Virginia. Nah, it wasn't that way. Listen, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I was recruited by Virginia, uh, Hampton University. Okay. Um, coming out of uh, MCI. And I forgot the coach name, but this brother would call me religiously. Right. Right? Right. And he would just tell me, listen, I'm not going to make any promises about, you know, all the things you can do here, but I'm going to let you know, Glenn, you could come here and be Glenn all four years and play your game. So right? It's just one of those things where, gee, like, we were – what up, Eli? But um, it, it was just – it was one of those things where when we had them, so our setup would be, you know, our parents, me in the middle over here and the coaches in front of us. You know, you try to get a feel for that. And one of the things that was a no-no if a motherfucker came in and talked about you're going to start. Like, it was one of those things where that was kind of a no-no immediately. But um, I guess we'll get to that, if, you know, your whole recruiting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the, the point I, I, I was making was – uh. At the time, I kind of, you know, turned my nose up at Hampton and not really appreciating the benefits of going to uh, a ACBU. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was so caught up in, you know, I knew a uh, former high school teammate of mine at Lincoln with the Fairleigh Dickinson. They had just built this uh, great rock the center where, you know, the All-American camps was held there in Jersey. It was a home away from home. And like how you felt at Virginia, the system, the system, the basketball system wasn't made for me. Yeah. The education and academics and the college life was great. 
Now and I su- and I kind of superseded everything once I started to see the focus on some of my teammates and which where the team was going. Now, now see, now you're hitting the spot. So, though basketball was was stressful and shit wasn't going right, the academic portion, like the school itself, was amazing. They still treated me as if I was having thirties, and and I, I can't thank VA, you know, UVA enough. Like to to this day, I have people who reach out. Like it's it's you know, it it was a it was amazing as far as the school itself and the life. It was just basketball. It wasn't it wasn't where I needed or wanted it or expected it to be. Breaking up again. Damn it. <laughs> oh, fuck. What about now? No, no, you good. Now we okay, now I hear you. I thought I thought you was uh you was talking, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, it's 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 a lot that uh players and families need to do together. Um and it'll help benefit you, you know, the players in the long run. No doubt. Right? All of these things that we're talking about and addressing some of those uh, mental problems that you face. Now, be, you being an assistant coach, is it important for you to have a relationship and a bond with this, the uh, players that you, reco- that, that you recruit? I mean... I, how, I, how important is it? It's it's super important. It's not only just the dudes that I recruit. It's everybody on that damn team. Again, like, I get it. You're going to have whatever, but I, maybe I look at things differently. I look at things from back in the day where, again, if you take somebody's child, you give them back a man. Like, it's it's more than just the basketball shit, man. Like, they got to be able to come to you, you know, so you become some type of – I'm not going to say a father figure, but a, a uh, you know, whatever, a, a male – a, a, a figure, a major figure in their lives, and it, it's more than just the dude that you recruit. Of course, you may have a little bit more, but I don't. Me personally, I try to spread that because everybody's going through something, man. And I just, I, I, I always wanted to be there for them when they needed me. I don't, you know, it could be anything. So it's not even just about the dude that I recruit. It's everybody on that squad. And this is where it's funny sitting around some of these coaches. That shit kind of went out the window. It's all about what the kid can do for them. And I get it. We got to eat that way. But what the fuck are we going to do for them? How are we going to make sure that they understand once they leave here, this shit is ugly. Out there. Like, how, how can, yeah, we, man. you know, how can, and I, I just try to do my best to convey, and that's all we can do. It's a tribe type thing. We each got to, especially us being that we played and we we're, we're go- currently going through it or we've gone through some, you know what I'm saying? So, it's more than just that that dude that you recruit. It's that all the motherfuckers getting them to understand that I'm here for you. Like things may happen, but I'm here for you. That's crazy because I I never was going to mention this, but I, I'm gonna mention it tonight. Uh, the guy who runs Hoop Group, yeah, Tiny Green, right, right. He was my coach at Fairleigh Dickinson, right. Was he? He was this was yeah, he was my assistant coach at Fairly Dickinson. Wow. And he recruited me. Right? So Tiny Green, the first game I started as a sophomore at Fairly Dickinson, I scored 25 points. I missed three shots. I was 10 or 12, and I think I was five for six from the free throw line. And he came to me after the game and said he wasn't going to allow me to shoot that way anymore because I took the spot of a senior who he recruited and he wanted to have he wanted that senior to have a good year. What? Right. So and 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 during my time at Fairleigh Dickinson, a lot of the coaches was coming in using Fairleigh Dickinson as a trampoline to go on to a better job. Right, right. So a lot of my coaches would come in and they'll stay for a year, then they move on to a bigger school, then they're in the Big Ten, then they're in the ACC, and then they're all the different schools. Yeah, but back so, in the day, real quick, G, back in right. the day though, you remember that shit was again, I didn't I didn't start my freshman year of high school. All the coaches for the most part back in the day was on that now nah, senior, you know, the seniority shit. So I feel you on that. That's crazy, though. You came in, you did your thing, and he's going to hold you back. So I went through a little bit of that my freshman year. Like, I had, I ran off some good games, and it was almost like he was like, nah, slow down. Right. So it's just one of those things. 
Shit ain't never gonna be perfect, man. It's all about how you handle nah. it. Mike T's on here. Yeah, yeah, my God, Mike T. Yo, look, Mike, we got the artwork coming soon. We just been backed up. My man has been been finishing and touching up a lot of art, but we want to make sure it gets out. Trust me, it's on its way. I got you. But um, yeah. And yours is being done as we speak. But yeah, no, nah, it's one of those things where this is where again adversity. Some, it's not always bad, man. And the shit that's going on now is crazy. Where kids are ducking that, and their parents are helping them to do such. And it's things that they faced. But it uh, it is what it is, I guess. Zell, what else? Listen, I, I I know I know my my guy Coach Shaw should be on here. He's the father of Kilo Brantley. Yeah, nah, and we right. So we, we try to do that. No. Yeah. Little B, who uh, you, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Shaw. Of course, and Little B, Little B used to be the guard running around with chips. Right. So, you know, that's his own. There you go. Yeah. It's it's real. Queens is in here. <laughs> Queens get the That's money. right. That's right. Yo, listen. Uh Shaw was on the show as well, and he was just saying he wanted to make sure that he was there for Khalil every step of the way because his father wasn't able okay. to be there every step of the way in his life. And also he said uh, yo, G, I want to make sure that I'm not overdoing it just because I didn't get a chance. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure my son has an opportunity and a better opportunity than me, but I'm not going to push all my dreams on him. And I think a lot of parents get that twisted. Either they're not involved or they're overly involved. Well, I think what, you know, he's, I don't know if he's gotten a lot of heat, but you hear him at these events when Lil playing, like, he ain't one just to sit back and he's at everybody. You know what I'm saying? He's aggressive. So, you know, some people say that hurts the kid and all, but as long as it's all positive and he ain't out there slandering nobody else, if anything, he's trying to get Lil to play a little harder, you know, I'm all for it. But, uh, no, nah, I, I could definitely see that because, you know, this side of it, because we're actually looking at him and, uh, that's part of the worry. Like, you know, is his father going to be too overbearing? Because, again, what people don't understand, when we're doing this, we're also looking at the parents. You know, we're looking at the parents as if we, we want to see if they're going to be a problem or an issue. Like, so all that shit comes into play. All right, we go, I'm going to cut you off, but we're going to come back for the, for the next session, all right? Do we're not finished. We're not done, like Karis once said. We're not done. All right. So, go. How did you get to How did you get to Hampton University? So, I was in the area. Once I re uh, I used to, you know, skill development in the business. What's good, boy? And um. I ended up getting on with Nike and doing their skill stuff. I, you know, all those major events as far as the camps, the LeBrons, the KDs, and I did that for about eight years, and uh, along with my my own stuff. And um, a couple guys from Boo, the Boo Williams organization, the AAU program, okay. you know, on top or whatever. They um, you know, they came they came at me with it, and at first I was like, nah, because again I didn't want to coach, and then um. Uh, you know, I came back, I came to the house, and I talked to the CEO, and um, it kind of just made sense. It's like the next part of my journey. And uh, so I started to think, you know, more about it. One thing led to another. You know, I sat with the coach. I liked what he was talking about. They weren't in the, uh, the MEAC anymore. They were getting ready to go to the Big South. And uh, I just felt like, all right, it's time, so... You know, I, I jumped in, and uh, that's that's how that happened, man. Like, and my whole thing to him on my interview was, you know, I'm not really worried about any X's and O's. If anything, I just want to do skill development and mentor. You know, along with the other obligations that I have as far as scouting and recruiting, but my main thing was uh, just being there for those guys, man. Just being there for those guys. That's Ali asking that crazy ass question.
But <laughs> but uh, it was just about being there for those guys. And at the same time, it's a new experience for me. Like that's you know I never I haven't been on that side of it really, except for maybe at uh, an elite one hundred or some type of a camp where I'm coaching for a couple of days. It, this was real. So one thing right. leads to another, and I, I accept it, and here we are. Okay. All right. Um. <clears throat> Now, being at Hampton, right, historically black college, okay. uh, how is the competition in the Big South? I mean, honestly, it's not all that. Like, it's really not all that. And um, the difference is, I guess, from the MEAC, which I don't really know anything about. I don't, I don't know anything about historic black colleges. I'm not going to front. Like, that's not something that I ever paid attention to. And I'm not trying to be arrogant. It's just that's not something that I've ever dealt with. And uh, I didn't go to games when I was living, uh, you know, I didn't go to any of the games when, but um, I would say the difference, like, for example, my, my head coach is content. He's good where he is. Like he's, he's fine there. You know, when you, you're dealing with these other levels, you know, these guys are aspiring and trying to get to, and I'm not saying he's not, but from what I see, he's good. Um, but when you, these guys that we're dealing with, you know, they're all hungry. Either there's only a couple of them that actually came from the top down to that level, but the the others are trying to get to that top level. So you know, you got a different level of recruiting, scouting. They're out there. It was just it was just a different organization. Um, and I don't know if Hampton was the example for the rest of the MEAC. Actually, they were the better team in the MEAC, so I guess that was the standard. It was you know we just did things kind of different there. But uh, it really, it really wasn't all that tough, to be honest with you. Mikey Williams came out and said that he might give uh, the ACBUs a, a, a look, and even Khalil Brantley, he got his first uh, ACBU offer, and he's taking it very serious. Nah, G. Let me tell you, it's. It's one of those things where, like, we started to question if it was just because of what was going on, if it was because it was trending, mm -hmm. if it was sexy right now. Um, but at the same time, it's something we had to pay attention to. So, for example, with the Mikey Williams kid, his mom was a, an amazing softball player at Hampton. So we somewhat had an end, yeah. Like, of course, you know, they did their homework. So, honestly, I think the time he comes out, which he's only a sophomore, they're already going to be doing the whole NBA straight to the NBA jump from high school, whatever stuff. So I don't think, you know, that he'll really, but we've already spoken to family members. Like it's real, especially with him because of that tie. You know what I'm saying? But um, HBCU, my bad, my bad, Chuck, my bad, Chuck, HBCU. Chuck, I wasn't going to, I wanted to, but I was like, I'm going to let my man live. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> we understand what you meant. Hey, cause, cause he went, he, I, he went to a uh, HBCU. So I, no my doubt. bad, Chuck. My bad. Slow mo, slow mo. But um, nah, it was, <laughs> it, it was something where you know we jumped on that because again, that's you never know what could happen. Like he could really start a movement. Like I have another name, like you know uh, Ryan Mutombo. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be throwing these names out, but anyway, he uh, you know Mutombo's son. He came from Mutombo's son. Yes. Like, he asked, "Why aren't we recruiting him?" And he's he's on a he's of a different mindset. He's he's already understands what he wants to do. Like he already knows. So his thing is, you know, why should I give them them folks that money when I can come and you know earn money for my people? Like the shit's real, but it's just how real. Once you start to see the differences, like once you start to see that you don't have a lot of that candy, you're going from you're going from that that mansion to the hood like shit's real it, it, you know it, it may change people's minds but if you're of a you know like like, like maybe him someone who's focused and already that won't bother him you know what i'm saying like it's just one of those things where is it a trend or are they riding a wave or are they serious listen some of our greatest basketball players and nba legends came from hbcus i didn't even know i didn't know any of that yo like again as much no, as let me let me explain something to you. Yes, a lot of them. And let's let's talk about football for one second. At one time, the majority of the players in the NFL came from Notre Dame and Grambling. What? Those top two schools. 
Now, I've heard of Grambling, of course. I think it's Doug Williams, correct? Yes. So, but a lot of other linemen, safeties, and defensive players and wide receivers came out of Grambling. So I, I think, listen, the money going to go where the talent is. And the fact that before they were allowing black players into, you know, the major universities, a lot of the black schools were winning. Let's say, for instance, Tennessee State was the first college to win three straight national championships. Right. Shout out, shout out to my man, Aunt Mason, sleep in peace. Facts. Okay. Black school, right? Now, yeah. Again, we, 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 we definitely know because I looked at it like that coming out of it's high not, school. Son, that wasn't what we saw on CBS. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, I know. Trust me. Trust me. Um, big boy, matter of fact, the enforcer. I didn't realize he went to you know, damn Hampton, um, played with the Pistons. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't. They mentioned him the other day. Rick Mahorn. Rick Mahorn. Amazing Rick Mahorn. Dude. Amazing dude. Amazing Right. Dude. And I didn't even know. I didn't even know. So it's Earl like, LaPearl, Clyde, Walt Frazier, all of these guys played at historically black colleges. Uh, Willis Reed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't know. Uh -uh, or did, did, he go to did he go to Creighton? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I think he went to a historically black college as well. Rob yeah. Men, damn, they going off. <laughs> Fast. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Al Hassan, what? Is that Hassan? Said, yeah. Are you gonna look to go to the NBA? He, he shoot. He shoot. He shoot a little bit fast, huh? <laughs> right. He, he bunched it off his gun early. Yeah. Nah. He, he. That's my brother. But again, like Ali, if that happens, so be it, man. So be it. Okay, you, you gotta take Kylo Quinn too, who's currently in the NBA. Good looking, uh, G, but he's you know currently right. in, in the NBA. But no, nah, that's one thing I didn't. And I, I'm not. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I don't know much about. I didn't. I didn't know much about all that. You know, what I'm saying straight up, as far as the black yeah. Hey, hey, the look, when, when, when you when you get off here and you, and you have some time, go on YouTube, man, and, and you'll see it. it'll blow your mind, man. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. It'll blow your mind. All right. So you you played at some of the highest levels, uh, Catholic school league. Uh, you played in the ACC. Well, Catholic school league in New York City. You played in the ACC, and you played in the NBA and overseas. Right. Right. What's the difference between high school and a major university? I mean, clearly it's about talent, but it's it's, it's for me. Is focus and um, understanding of time, like time management. That's, these are things that are, are not spoken of. Like you got to be. It can't be one of those things as in high school where you could just pretty much do anything you want. We're talking about the top kids from from different city, different states. Like you know, you go to that team. You might have been the best in your team, but then there's the best of this. You know, you got these different levels of kids, and everybody's special. But I, I, I think that um, just understanding what it is, like, you know, as my man T said, it is big business. But, you know, spending your time wisely, honing your craft, not, you know, not losing focus. And it's so easy to, especially myself, but not, not losing focus, you know, being, just, just understanding those four years are going to go by quickly and just working and leaving it out there every moment, respecting the game and, you know, being a sponge. The, the the level the jump is it's crazy, cause you know you, for example myself when I went up there I you know Jason Williford who's currently assistant coach at UVA, the head assistant coach at UVA, he had already you know he's he's two years in I I get there his junior year he's already in the weights he's we didn't lift no damn weights in in the city like that wasn't something we do and when nah, it came you're right that, you're right I didn't understand on that my thing was I hoop I don't play football what the fuck I look like lifting weights but he was a man already. He was man, he was manhandling me, but um, it's just one of those things where once you get there, you you should have some type of focus in understanding what you're trying to do, and you just got to work towards it. That's all. But the level, the talent, you know, the talent's the biggest thing, man. Like everybody's nice, everybody, you know, and then you have guys who've already been doing it, like so. And it was somewhat of a shock for me. 
film. I don't know if I answered that question, but I tried. No, 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 you did, you did. And, and you kind of answered both because I was going to ask you from college to the NBA, and it's the same thing. Oh, no. You know, and talent. Is, and not focus, really. Like, mm. definitely the talent. That's a given. But the focus, like, you got to get in there. And some guys have – some guys have it – where they're, you know, those those lottery picks, they have the time to come along and, you know, if you're that second round pick or you're just one of those that are invited to camp, you ain't got no damn time. You got to come in ready. And you'd like for those lottery picks and first round picks to be ready. But a lot of them have the understanding that they have a little bit more time. They're they're catered to a little bit more. What's good, JC? You, you, they're catered to a little bit more. And, uh, like... There is no time for that if you ain't one of those 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 kids you know that are, have been blessed to be drafted highly, and then of course the talent level, and then tr just trying to figure it out. Let, hopefully you're afforded time to figure it out. For example, with me with the Heat, I wasn't that. Um, when I get there, uh, you know, it's pretty much they had just moved to the American Airlines Arena, and they had made a bunch of trades: Jamal Mashburn, PJ Washington. I mean, PJ, yeah. Not PJ Washington, but PJ Brown. Um, yes, uh, yes, yes. My man is a shooter from Minnesota. Wasn't I? Can't believe it. I love him to death. Um, realist, one of the realest dudes ever. Anyhow, they had made a bunch of changes where they brought Anthony Mason, Eddie Jones, Ricky Davis, Brian Grant, big things. The new building, you know, Zoe, Brian Grant, and Mason, like all these guys supposed to do big things, and shit just didn't happen that way. So, like, the first three games, we were at home and we were getting booed and shit, and that was something that Coach Riley wasn't, as, you know. And it was just one of those things where they had, they thought they had to make a decision. Well, Zoe got sick. That was a major thing. That's when his, I think it was a, a liver thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. that was a big blow to the squad. Then we weren't playing well. So through the first six, I think we might have, we might have been three and three or something like that. And they had just made a decision, like, you know. I got a couple more games in, but they had just made a decision that we need to bring somebody who can can come in right away and score. Where when I, I, I did my thing all the way through, and I did get a little bit, you know, not starstruck, but I was like, wow, I'm playing with these motherfuckers that I've idolized and loved and watched Tim Hardaway, blah, blah, blah. And I was out there just trying to do the basics. For Sean Lennon, thank you. That's my man, Vo, Vo Lennon. Appreciate that. But um, it was just one of those things where I was out there, and I wasn't Chuck, there. Chuck, wasn't Chuck to the rescue again. Appreciate you. <laughs> but um, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I never really – I wasn't myself. I was very mechanical because, again, the practices were Stan Van Gundy, and he didn't play that shit. The moment you stepped on that wood, you had to be ready to go full speed, full tilt, and to the point where even the veterans like Eddie Jones and them were a little uncomfortable. But, of course, they were – they could do what the fuck they want. He signed for $96 million. Brian Grant signed for $87 million. It was just wild. And then it, it was just – Knock it off, golf. Knock it off. <laughs> so it was just one of those. I know he was down in Miami. If if his head was turning in Virginia, his head was spinning in Miami. Anyhow, let's all right. Go. We already know. I've been to both places. Let's let's. What up, forty? Let's keep. Let's just stay focused. <laughs> but nah, it was it was just one of those where it was a lot, man. Like we had the crazy playbook. Like there was so much shit, and then it was just it's Pat Riley, like. Fucking Pat Riley. So it was one of the things where I didn't settle in and own it. I was still, and I just needed some more time, and I just wasn't afforded that. So they ended up bringing Cedric Sabalos in, who ended up really only playing three more games because he's out of shape and shit. They would have been better off with me. Anyhow, right. It was just one of those things that, you know, it was a learning experience, and um, it was amazing, though. And that's one thing. Like, once you get a, a, a taste of that, the private jets and all that, it'll, it'll turn you. Yo, let me tell you, uh, just I, I commend anyone, I don't care how long you played in the NBA, if you got to practice, sit in the locker room, put an official uh, pair of NBA socks, no. smell of towels, I'm you know, you, you, you were there. I'm going to tell you this. I, the, the proud you coach, earned my respect, no, big I, time. I appreciate it. The, 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 the day, the, the moment, the day that I, once I, and I don't want to say I arrived, but I was, I was good on whatever happened was when I got to play against the Nets at up there back home and everybody from my family and my my hood, my 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 block, my my hood was at that game. 
And after that game, wow, it was just like coming out and everybody's in the back. Like it was amazing, man. That was like the, that was the most amazing evening for me. Wow, and, yeah, how did you do? I, right. I, I probably had like four points. You know, nigga ain't getting a lot of points. Ain't get a lot of time. I got about maybe ten. It was it was it was something like I had said I don't know if you had heard me but you know Steph was at the one then for them and it was just amazing to be out there on the floor with him. That's real. But nah, that that's that, real. That whole shit was crazy. That's a whole another story too. Like it ain't nothing like it though. That's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm quite sure they did some behind the scenes stories down there, especially <laughs> in the, uh, the Miami nightlife. Oh. Things in that nature. So after you, after you uh, left uh, Miami, where did you go? So I ended up going to Sioux Falls. I didn't realize at that time it, it wasn't their farm team like it is now. So they sent me to Sioux Falls to keep an eye on me and see if they were going to bring me back or whatever. I did really well. I averaged about 19 points a game. And there was a couple other teams that flirted with me. But I shouldn't have did that. I should have went overseas. I should have I should have went overseas immediately. I had Rome, which is a EuroLeague team in Italy. What Who wanted you? You good now? Still talking fuzzy. I'm solid. Like I'm not even on the wife. I'm just going off my shit. What about now? Because I keep your stuff. Right, go ahead, go ahead. Right. So anyway, now like I should have I should have bounced to, to Rome. I had a contract in Rome. But I, I ended up going because my my Amer my agent was strictly NBA. He didn't know anything about any of the European stuff. So I missed out on a, an amazing opportunity. And we went to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is shit. I went from not 80, 90 degree weather in December to fucking negative 50 degree weather out there. Damn. It, oh, it was brutal. That shit was crazy. Well, listen, basketball has took you a lot of places, right? 100. Coach Jones. Definitely, definitely. Uh, definitely a lot of arenas. What can you say is the one thing that sticks out to most, the most uh, for you playing in the NBA? What was the, the one thing that stuck out to you? They, they actually, like how we, how we take these dudes for granted. Um, again, I wasn't getting playing time like that. But for us to pick up after a game and go to, let's say, you know, we went from – Miami to Toronto. We get in at three in the fucking morning. We play that next day. And for people to expect, for example, Eddie Jones to have who had just had thirty, whatever, to have that the next night, I was exhausted. Let alone some of the shit that goes on, like or for example, this day and age, LeBron, like for him to be able to do the shit he's doing day in and day out is unreal, man. Like I I'll tell you I'll take KD, who's a, a friend of mine. In between those, so let's say they play, you know, they OKC. Okay, they get ready to go play, you know, let's let's say they come out east. They're getting ready to play the Knicks. When he would touch down, they just played the game. They got to fly out. When he would touch down, he would already have had somebody get him a gym. So once he gets off that plane at 3 a.m., he's back in the gym working on shit he did wrong or getting up his reps. That's before the fucking the morning shoot around at 9. Like, it's people don't understand. Yes, it's a great life. You make a hell of a lot of money. You, you know, you're living, but it's taxing. Like that shit's crazy. And that was one of the blessings me being able to see that firsthand for myself. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how the motherfuckers aren't doing it unless they are being chemically enhanced. But it's just crazy to me. I, I don't. Yo, I, I I remember coming up and like not having time. For a social life, you, you've been there, right? Mm -hmm. And you get a taste of the social life. You like, damn, like, yeah. hey, they like doing the party really over here. You think you doing some <laughs> shit the party over here? And we not we not realizing, and in some way we are the party, but we missing out on the the teenage, the the, the kids, the young stuff that kids experience, and not knowing those sacrifices are the sacrifice you got to make to be great. No question. And, like, 
You know, I didn't like uh, use Kobe, for example. Earlier, I didn't like him. I mean, I don't think many of us did. He was different. Right. But then I learned to appreciate and understand, especially I heard, you know, hearing some of his praise of how, how he, you know, some of the work he put in, how he put in his work, how many out, like, this shit is crazy. You can't help but respect that and appreciate that. Right. But it, it, it's very taxing. Even when I was in college, we didn't do, you know, earlier was Freak Nick and all that shit. We didn't do none of that. We didn't get to do Daytona Beach because we had, you know, we were either getting ready to go to the NCAA tournament or we was in it or whatever. We didn't have time to do a lot of that shit. And it, it's, it's you know, you got to dedicate, you got to be serious about this, man. Like, you got to be all in to be successful. How did it make you feel to see UVA uh, in their success? Oh, oh, my. I would keep on. I didn't understand it. Like, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know if it was them or was college basketball that fucking bad. I'm just going to keep it real. Like, but one thing I didn't like was how the media and how, you know, they were, you know, everybody was giving them their respect. And But it was sad because growing up, what did we hear? Team, team, team. You know, play for your teammates, play. And here you had a real team that played for each other. Not the super giant recruits. They didn't have all the top, you know, the five stars. And they did it as a unit for each other. And they didn't get enough love. Like, I guess it's because, you know, UVA is not sexy. Kentucky's sexy. Right, right, right. And Duke is sexy. But yeah. They, they did it, man. And, again, I didn't understand it. I, I just got to give a, you know. A shout out, or you know, I, to Coach Williford and you know Bennett, and you know they got the damn thing done. But I, I definitely didn't see that happening. Not with that, I, I didn't see it happening, and that makes it even that much sweeter. Because they didn't have. Yeah. Listen, UVA reminded uh, me of my team that we had in '86 uh, that won a city championship, and you know, I always give uh, my coach Hostine a lot of props especially Tiny, uh, for solidifying the fact that, you know, we become a, we became a team to be reckoned with. And I think if those later championships don't happen, I think people, you know, kind of forget about what we did in 86 uh, with no all-city players or all-Americans at the time. Right, right, right. Right, so you find those special teams. So definitely salute yeah. to Virginia and their accomplishments, man. Um, so... I know we've been on here for like an hour and a half. I want to bring you on. I want to bring you back for part two. Let's do it. Right? Man. Especially for our, our, our conversation that we had yesterday. Um, right? We, we no definitely doubt. want to do that. No doubt. No doubt. And I, I want you to uh, definitely come on here and, 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 you know, talk about that. So, before we end, I'd like to uh, ask you, who would you like to nominate to be on Basketball Heads? Mm. Have you had Charles? Char I already reached out to Charles and Lamar. Those are my guys. I watched them come up. Okay. I reached out to both of them. Charles, uh, he works at night, so it's kind of hard for him to get on at 8, but I told him I'll rearrange the time for him so he could get on. You got to get him up here, man. Like, he was a monster. Um Listen, I seen I used to see that kid at like 10, 11 years old kill. I watched Lamar score fifty four points at eleven years old. He's a, he was a he's a monster. Like he's a fucking monster. Like I <laughs> Yeah, so you, you think about it. You think about it, you know. Um and Who? Kaboo Stewart. Kibu Stewart. Nah. We played that. Shit, he was a beast. He played with the church. He ended up. He went on to the league and all that. Um, I got yeah, to, yeah. No, I'll plug you with him so you could talk. You could talk. Like, definitely, you know, definitely, 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 definitely. A lot of names. So we'll just do this off. I'll just I'll I'll go three and I'll send them to you. But there's some motherfuckers. Definitely gotta get Key up on here. Key Hill, you gotta get in the Key up on here. Um, got you. I mean, I don't know. Did you get Selden Jefferson? Any of them up on here? That's 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 my guy. I got his number. I could definitely reach out to him. I'm going to do that anyway. I spoke to Bud already, okay. so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get something on. But uh, nah, as soon as we get off, I'm like, damn, I should have said him. I should have said him. I should have said him. Nah, and, and, you know, look, you got my number. Just shoot me a text. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no question. No question. Definitely, definitely. I can't thank you enough, man. Thank you. 
And, um, nah, nah, brother. Listen, I I love to hear your story, man. You gave it up. Um, I'm let everybody know to watch this video because they need to hear this side of basketball. You know, it's real. It's definitely. You know, and, and and I know you're gonna go far because you somebody who is real with himself. One hundred. One hundred. Right. Yep. Oh, we have one more question. We have one more question. Um, I think Ross said it. He asked you if. Long Island University, LIU, has an opening for a head coaching job. Would you be interested? Oh, nah. Matter of fact, it was something before we get off. Grimo, he had asked something that was. Can you see his his joints too? Who that? Grimo. He uh. He had asked some damn it, and I meant I didn't want to let it go. But um, no, you know what? I think that um, it was. What was it? Was that the last? M one? Oh, it was the NBA. Would you like? He, he asked the NBA question. No, no, Grimo did. I think Grimo asked that NBA question. It's all good. Um, in regard. So I don't know if I answered that already. Todd Day's up on here. All right, cool. Peace. Um, I'm just flashing through this. Anyhow. My guy, Pat Alphonse, is in the building. I saw him come on earlier. I didn't get to shout him out. What up, Pat? Um, but no. So in regards to that question, because I think I answered the, the, if, if that's what grandma wanted. Um, no, I, I don't want to be a head coach, uh, G. Like, I know, I know that. I'm a soldier, man. Like, I don't want that. I want to be closer to, to them. Like, I want to be able to reach out and touch them. I need – it's this shit's real, and I want to be there for them. So any any time I – you know, I've, in terms of these positions that I – I tell them straight up, like, I don't really care, you know, player development. Let me be the mentor, and I'll do the other things. But the main thing is let, I'm there for these guys. And I mean that shit wholeheartedly. I don't want to be a head coach. I don't need that. Everybody wants their own ship and all that shit. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Just – I'm your, I'm with you, and I got your back, and I damn sure got their back. That's the main thing for me. These kids, and them understanding, this shit is real out here. Take advantage of this time, man. And it's it's both books and sports. Like come out of a be a multiple threat. Don't waste this fucking time, man. So I hope I answered that. That's Not, real. Yeah, I don't. That heck. No, no, no. That's real, man. Yeah, listen. You 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 touched on being. Uh, how important being a mentor and the player development is, I think that's hell of important. I think every program should have that as a part of their program. Right. No, nah, it's real. Like, this shit's real. And um, I'm good on that head coaching shit. I'm just going to try to be the best fucking assistant coach I can be. I don't know how people take that, but I, I take it very serious. I want to be the best at that. And the main thing is reaching these kids and getting them to understand. I'm try just trying to get them to set themselves up for, for you know, success. And not failure, and that's just if that's just me giving them my time. So fucking be it. They can have it. I'm I'm blessed to be in the situation I am. I have understanding people backing me. Let's go, man. That's real, man. Nah, but again, I I appreciate you, Ron. Um, I appreciate you. Nah, man. Thank you, man. Salute, brother. Appreciate Thanks. you coming on. Uh, just hit me back when you ready to do part two. All yeah. right. You let me know. I'm always ready. Thank you, everybody, for coming through. My man, Jamal Robinson, assistant coach, Hampton University. Appreciate you, baby. Have a good one. My man. All right. All right. <laughs> Everybody get a line by your tickets because the game must start. No time to kick it in.